Welcome back to Switch to Linux. We are uh, back over here on uh, Manjaro, and we're going to do probably the last video on Manjaro for a while. Um, this video here, we're just going to talk about, uh, I've been used for, I don't know, two, three weeks, maybe three, four weeks. I forget how long I've been using it. Um, but it's time to move off of Manjaro. Um, so let me know your in your uh, comments below, what distro should I try running on this PC next? Um, a couple of limitations to that. If it takes me more than a couple hours to get things set up, it's, it's a deal breaker. I do not have that kind of time. Um, um, as of right now, I might make a few dollars off of a video, especially since about everything I'm doing is getting demonetized instantly. I don't have the time for that. I have to maintain a regular full-time work schedule and everything else. Uh, but I'm open to testing out any other types of distros, any other type of desktop environments, as long as it does not take me a ton of time to get something set up. Um, but anyway, um, we're going to talk about my final take on uh, Manjaro Budgie. Okay, so uh, I tried to change my desktop backgrounds around uh, each time I uh, each time I loaded the the system up, so you got a chance to see see things from different perspectives. Um, so this is my basic setup, and um, I'm running Manjaro Budgie, which is uh, it's a, a little bit more heavyweight of a desktop environment, but it is what is considered in this group of modern. And uh, some people are looking at these like, "Yay, we should use modern desktops because they're modern." And I completely disagree with that viewpoint. Um, I think we should use a desktop that meets our needs. Although taking time to run desktops like this um, is a good thing in that it teaches us how to, you know, how to interface with different desktop environments. We can get so bogged down in the same old that we don't know that. If if better things are coming around. So one example of that for me is this is actually the first time I've been using docs and enjoying them. I actually started with that with um, with my um, uh, my Debian KDE computer uh, where I ran docs on that. Um, which I I mean I'm I'm liking the concept of of having the dock. Um, the downside of having the dock, of course, is that as I'm maximizing Windows, which I frequently do, I do lose a little bit of space. So if I were to pull something open here, like here's Firefox, we'll open this guy up. Um, of course, I have this window set as as always uh, on top. The camera is always set to always be on top. But what you see here, let me just move this. I'll move this over here somewhere. And move it down here. All right, so what we see here is as this is maximized, not only am I losing place on the taskbar down here, but I'm also losing some place on the left. Now, there's another argument that people will have inside of all this is that losing space on the left is better and losing space on the top or the bottom is worse because we have wide screens. I, I just completely disagree with the viewpoint. Um, I don't think that the tiny little bit that my taskbar takes at the bottom of the screen is really any loss. Um, I'm not sure I've heard that argument a lot lately uh, because you could throw that just at, you know, the default of this has it the, the bar at the top. Uh, Ubuntu has the bar at the top. Gnome has the bar at the top. Mac has the bar at the top. Um, so I don't think that it's having a little bit on the bottom. But when you lose a little bit on the bottom and a little bit on the side, that's where we can start questioning uh, are we actually losing, uh, you know, losing anything here. Um, but that being said, um, overall, if I were forced to use a modern desktop environment, I would probably pick this one. Um, I like how the uh, Raven menu comes out. I like having easy access to the, the calendar over here, any notifications over here. And I like this input output thread. And if I play in in a video player it will show up down here so there's just a whole lot of really cool stuff in the system it does work nicely one thing I did not get a chance to do is uh, I did not get a chance to experiment with uh, in uh, adding account settings this is something that a lot of your modern uh, operating systems can do including this one gnome or where's it at is it details I don't even know where it's at. Um, you can input your, there we go, online accounts. You can come in here and input your online accounts. Um, I don't really use online accounts. So uh, for me, it's not something that uh, that I would experiment with. And uh, I keep on thinking I, I will. 
I don't know, maybe I still will before I close this out. So if I do media server, personal content can be added to your applications through a media server. It says no available media servers. That's interesting to me because my NAS drive does have a media server component. So I don't know. I don't really care about this type of functionality um, for whatever case. So maybe it's up to someone else who actually uses these to see if those function well. And there went my camera. That is one of the downsides of this distro is my, the camera just repeatedly crashes constantly. All right. Um, so with that being said, um, we do have a very nice sleek system other than the camera. Everything else uh, is, is working pretty good. Um, a downside of the budgie, I guess I'll have another downside here. Another downside of budgie, something that other people have asked for, there is no launcher. There's no launcher on this thing. There are icons, which is effectively like pinning an application to a taskbar, which was an abomination that the first time I saw it started in Windows Vista. Um, it might have been in Linux or something prior to that. I really don't know. Um, however, that being said, there is a critical difference between pinning an application to a launcher or to a taskbar and having a launcher. And that is that pinning an application, I can run one instance of those applications without finagling weird things like middle clicking buttons and all sorts of other things. Uh, versus a launcher, I can click it and as many times as I click it, I have access to that application. Now I have my dock set up in that way, so if I come over and click Firefox twice, I will get two Firefox windows. So that's okay, but if I were to really want to say that this is a great distro, I would have the, the functionality of having a launcher in here. I don't want to pin applications. I think pinning applications is completely useless and annoying. That's a personal opinion. Um, now, what else is really nice about this? Well, out of the box, I didn't have to really fight with a whole lot. Uh, everything did seem to work um, as far as network servers. I could get into, uh, into my NAS drive without a problem. I was even able to connect my media servers uh, without a problem. So if I go into, for example, my Kodi install, um, Kodi is properly saving all of the account logins for my media server, uh, which is great. I found Lollipop does not seem to do that on the music end, um, but Kodi does, which is which is really good. Um, and that was a fight I've had to do with with other distros. Um, I run, for example, that this computer's hard drive runs um, uh, Linux Mint KDE. I have to actually mount those on start with the fstab file. Um, so this uh, has the ability to do that without uh, without without that complication. Um, for those interested in gaming, uh, Steam does work. I'm not a gamer, so. Um, uh, for me, I don't know, um, but regardless, uh, Steam will work. Um, there is, and I just downloaded this as a free game. Yeah, I don't really care. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Steam, mostly because I'm not a big fan of DRM. And, you know, if Steam crashes or gets into a fight with some game manufacturer, I can lose access to a game I bought, <clears throat> licensed, whatever else. Um, but for those interested um, in, a, in a very good, functional, nice system, Hey, Steam's functional, it works, um, it, everything seems to work just fine, um, so that is, uh, that is that. So Steam, uh, Steam is, is a go. Oh, close. Come on, Steam, go away. All right, um, so that works. Now, I will say, though, that out of the box, it doesn't work, so I spent just a little bit of time looking up, you know, why is this not working? It turns out that the initial install with with Steam on Manjaro ships with a bad library, and so what you have to do is uninstall it. What I did, uh, there's a few workarounds. What I did is I uninstalled it. I deleted the the cache folder from my home directory. I reinstalled it from the repository, and it worked. That's all I did. Um, so that'll work. Um, I did attempt to run Play on Linux. Um, I had a failure on Play on Linux. Um, in that all of the uh, all of the the pop-ups from within the the wine application so the install shield selecting your language install shields etc uh, they don't show up uh, at all so I was not able to actually run anything um, I would spend the time to fix that but it's not high priority for me and I know that uh, play on Linux works just fine on my other Linux computers um, other work functionality. Um, I did this computer mostly to do video applications. So um, I did some video on Firefox on view.yahoo.com. I did some Chromium with 
um, uh, with uh, uh, YouTube. I did a little bit of Midori with YouTube. Um, I've used, I did VLC is what I generally use to play DVDs. That works great, just out of the box, perfectly fine. I did Cody to do some streaming things, that works fine. Um, I never got around to setting up anything in Evolution, but Thunderbird works. Um, so as far as basic production, um, I did do some, uh, some image editing on GIMP. Uh, that, was, uh, that worked beautifully, so no problems for just booting up GIMP. Uh, getting everything to work right out of the box, no problems. So as far as basic production uh, goes, uh, this computer has been great. There, I've actually had no real issues. Um, and as I said, um, when I was experimenting with the Ubuntu, I really I found myself not running Ubuntu most of the time. The new Ubuntu 17, um, it just it just got in my way. I couldn't get things done. Um, I end up fighting with it and it's just easier for me to reboot the system and do a Linux distro that works than it was. Uh, with this running Manjaro, never had to do that. Uh, it just worked out of the box. Um, everything on here worked. I had think I had one time when I shut this down and booted into something else. Uh, that was just uh, playing one DVD, took it out, put in another DVD. It wouldn't play the second time around. I think a simple reboot would have done it, but in this case, I, um, you know, I just said, yeah, not messing with it tonight. Shut this down, rebooted it into another operating system. DVD worked fine, fine from there. Booted it back up, played DVD since then. So it's just a temporary system glitch. Um, if you watch my initial setup videos on this distro, uh, you know that Skype did initially give me problems. I am going to declare that that was probably something on Skype's end. Um, this is the 5.4 version, I think, of Skype, and it, or is it 4.4, whatever it is. The older version of Skype works just fine. Um, I do think I still have the newer versions of Skype installed, although, uh, yeah, so I have the preview, uh, the beta version of Skype installed here as well. Um, I never got around to testing this because the other one was, was working just fine, and so that worked. So that's no issues there. Um, let see, what else do I have on this? I didn't spend a whole lot more time doing other things. I think I got the printer. Did I get the printer working or not? Nope. All right. I don't print a lot, so eh, there goes the camera. Again. We're going to leave it off this time. Uh, sound and video. I did not get around to testing OBS, but being as it uh, the other camera app keeps crashing, I'm not completely sure I'm holding my breath. I'm not going to declare that a failure with Manjaro as much as it could very well be the fact that this computer is a, a lower end computer with, you know, integrated graphics. And so I'm going to cut that one a little bit of slack. Uh, other computers have done a similar thing. Um, the other thing is uh, caffeine was something that I really wanted to work. Um, it installed right out of the box. I just searched for it right in the repository. It installs. It works. It starts up with my nice indicator here. I can very easily turn it on, turn it off. Uh, that's something that worked very well over Ubuntu, um, is that uh, on the Ubuntu, um, I, it, uh, it installed with failure. It gave me an error every time the thing started. Um, it was perpetually on. I didn't have a way to turn it off, but hey, at least my screen never went to sleep. <laughs> this one here, uh, it works for me. Um, you know, overall, my overall final uh, take on Manjaro, I never had to jump into terminal to fix things, which is great because I don't really know about uh, doing uh, Arch or uh, Manjaro in the terminal, um, and that's uh, perfectly fine with me. You can uh, save me this help documents. I won't read them. Um, I know how to do things in Debian. I learned Linux so that I could use, uh, you know, be functional in my operating systems as I got my regular work done. So. Uh, there will come a time I do want to learn the terminal applications. Um, I'll get to it, um, and I'll get to it when I have the free time to do that. I don't right now, and since I know Debian very well in the terminal, that's, it's a moot point for me. Um, so, uh, with that being said, um, overall, this distro is great. 
Uh, I will certainly place this among my uh, recommended distros for, for new Linux users, uh, particularly if you want something more modern. Uh, this is a nice thing. I like this uh, environment better than GNOME because I have the ability to customize it quite a bit more. I can move the panel from the top to the bottom, which is my preference. Uh, I can make the panel nice and transparent, and I can give it color, or I can give it an image, or you know, I can change the system fonts without installing tweak tools and things. I have all of those functionality built in, and uh, those, if you're not familiar with it, are inside the, the Budgie desktop settings. So very nice settings, uh, ability to have multiple panels, in fact, uh, easy auto start applications. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a very good system. It's a nice uh, modern platform. So if you are looking for a modern Linux uh, desktop environment that you want to use, uh, go Budgie, absolutely. Uh, other Budgie options that are uh, up and coming in the news, of course, this is created, I believe, for Solace. And uh, Solace Budgie, uh, everything I hear is that it rocks. Um, I might try that soon. I don't want to try that yet just because I want to move off of Budgie for a little bit. Um, also, uh, Ubuntu Budgie is another new desktop environment with, uh, you know, it runs Ubuntu with Budgie. That one uh, sounds like it has some promise to it. So those are some other options you have if you want to look at this desktop environment. Um, overall, though, I think uh, Minjaro Budgie rocks. I like it. It's not something that I've... I've felt any challenges with uh, other than this camera constantly crashing. I really haven't had any other issues with it. Um, and uh, the little things that do drive me crazy, they're just mild crazy, you know, just very mild things. And most of them are just personal preference things. Uh, so that being said, um, this is a great distro. You should check it out if you're, especially if you're new to Linux or you're uh, wanting to learn something new. This is a good one to, to jump onto. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support uh, what we are doing, you can check us out at switch2linux.com forward slash support. So thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.